Hey, it's Scott here. I'm back with another quick tip. Today I'm going to cover a tip that helps smooth out your tool orientation workflow for 4 and 5 axis machining in Inventor HSM. It's a little bit contentious though because there's a little bit of a debate about whose idea it was originally. Phil Butterworth or Amish Solanke, both Fusion users. I think it was actually Amish that came up with the idea in the first place, but he called it a globe something or other. I'm calling it spike ball and especially in Inventor HSM, spike ball respawned. So let's get down to business. Here it is in all its glory. With tool orientation, you can select a cylindrical face, a conical face, or an edge to align your Z axis or X or Y axis um, to that selection to set the orientation of your tool for positional milling. So having a whole bunch of references like this make that really simple. Now I'm just gonna reduce the number of instances here down to six, just so it's not quite so intense and jump into the assembly. So how do you go about using it? Well, you save it as a template. You may have a, a, a machine template set up as well, table, fixtures, all the rest of it. You just insert it into your assembly using the assemble place command, position it, constrain it into place, and then set about um, using it for defining toolpaths. So in this example here with the morph toolpath, we just have to select our z-axis by either selecting one of these here, any one of these, and it's going to set up the orientation to suit. Um, I'm just going to stick with um, this red one here and click OK. And I may actually have to update my geometry here, we'll see. Yep, I need to update because my sketch driving all of my toolpaths are tied to that as well. And that's the beauty. That's one of the great things about this. And now if we regenerate this toolpath, you'll see the result. Now, you can go and change the orientation of this and it's going to change the orientation of the sketch and also the toolpath. But this is Inventor HSM we're talking about here and we've got access to iLogic. So let's see how that can help things. So I'm just going to fire up that form in my original spike ball template and I'm also going to suppress that extra pattern there. So now I've just got a star rather than a ball and switch over to my iLogic assembly and fire up my, my other iLogic form. So now, as it stands, I have a sketch sitting here at this angle. I'm just gonna update my geometry and take a look. Now we're in line with the model from here. But I actually wanna do some of the surfacing from this angle here. So I need to bring this red cylinder around so it's normal to my view. So I can, I can tilt this using the slider and roll it around. Getting pretty close to where I want to be. And then I can also shift this around in the X and the Y as well until we're happy with the result. I'm just going to stand that back up again a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to hit HSM update. It's going to update my model. It's going to update my sketches, and it's going to update all my toolpaths. So there we have it. So what if we want to flip it over the other way? Well, I can just roll this around here, and then hit update again. Everything updates my sketches, confining my toolpath and setting my morph rails. So morph from and to and the toolpath and everything all just updates. So there we go. Hope you like it. Check out iLogic if you want to uh, figure out how to do some of that stuff yourself. Have a good day. Bye.